You have possibly already seen this, but if you haven't, I will alert your attention to something extraordinary in the Star Trek world. There is a video called Regeneration. It's two minutes long, it's on YouTube, it's very cinematic, it is gorgeous, it is just incredible, and depicts the Enterprise D saucer section being prepared for retrieval from Viridian 3. Amazing CG, breathtaking visuals. And then it cuts to a shot of a hooded figure on top of the mountain on Viridian 3 where Kirk had been buried by Picard under some rocks. The person picks up Kirk's Starfleet insignia. This sequence looks just perfect. It looks like it was filmed on top of the very same mountain. But as far as I know, it was actually a very, very high quality digital recreation. This is next level computer generated imagery. So the man removes his hood and it's Leonard Nimoy's Spock. This sequence feels reminiscent to me of William Shatner's novel Star Trek The Return or possibly the comic book Spock Reflections. I think that was from 2010 or so. Of course, the idea of the Enterprise D saucer section being retrieved from Viridian 3 dovetails nicely with recent events from Star Trek Picard Season 3. Now, I'm not saying any of this is canon. In fact, I don't believe it is. It's just an extremely impressive concept video. And then it cuts to Spock from around the motion picture era. And he thinks for a moment of the Enterprise 1701 burning up in the atmosphere. And he reflects on this. It's just astonishing how any of this was done. So let's explain if we can. This amazing work was accomplished by the talents of a company called OTOY in collaboration with the Roddenberry Estate. According to their website, OTOY is the definitive cloud graphics company pioneering technology that is redefining content creation and delivery for media and entertainment organizations around the world. OTOY's Academy Award winning technology is used by leading visual effects studios, artists, animators, designers, architects, and engineers, providing unprecedented creative freedom, new levels of realism, and new economics and content creation and distribution powered by the cloud. They have been working with the Roddenberry Estate, and here's an article from the OTOY website dated August 22nd, 2022. OTOY and the Roddenberry Estate unveil the first immersive Roddenberry Archive experiences multi-year roadmap to preserve the history of Roddenberry's Star Trek work across movies, TV, and literature. At Creation Las Vegas, the Roddenberry Estate presented the first real-time, interactive, and fully immersive previews of the Roddenberry Archive, a multi-decade collaboration to preserve Gene Roddenberry's lifetime of work for future generations to experience in next-generation media formats. After announcing the Roddenberry Archive during Gene Roddenberry's centennial in August 2021, in May, sharing a preview of the nearly completed work archiving the Gene Roddenberry's 1964 Star Trek pilot, The Cage, OTOY Incorporated and the Roddenberry Estate made good today on a promise to let Star Trek fans start to explore the archive's ever-growing massive 3D data sets during its first year of production, bringing the archive's life-size digital recreation of the original Starship Enterprise for fans to experience at Creation Las Vegas 2022. The one-to-one -one scale assets in the archive include both a production version for physical assets filmed in the real world for TV or film, and a second in-universe version that works just as the item or ship might inside its narrative universe. The work is intended to preserve the important history of Gene Roddenberry's work, including Star Trek, for new holographic mediums for future generations to experience Gene Roddenberry's legacy with the highest levels of immersion and historical fidelity. So they're archiving all of Gene Roddenberry's work, including images, his writings, concept art, designs, everything that went into the development of Star Trek from the beginning, including all the stuff that was never used, including the film that was never made, Star Trek Planet of the Titans, the Phase 2 TV series, right up to the motion picture, and concept visuals and test footage has been created for the novelization of the motion picture. Many of you may know that the motion picture novel differs in some ways quite significantly from the actual final film. And they are also building digital versions of the Enterprise. The article continues, At the Roddenberry Archive interactive exhibit, OTOY and Roddenberry Entertainment are enabling fans to jump into the history of Star Trek 
right from where it all began with the Cage experience, where they can explore the Starship Enterprise created by Gene Roddenberry for the initial pilot of Star Trek from 1964. Recreations of the Cage were supervised by original director Robert Butler in March. The archive is curated and overseen by preeminent Star Trek cast and crew, including Denise and Michael Kuda, authors of Star Trek The Encyclopedia, and renowned Star Trek visual effects artists Doug Drexler and Darren Docterman. I'll skip ahead in the article a little bit to show you some of the visuals and screenshots of videos that they've made. I mean, just look at these. These are, in, these are incredible. The article continues... Both videos explore ideas and concepts coming from the unfilmed history of Star Trek and Gene's other works, including Gene's 1970s ideas for Star Trek Planet of the Titans, Star Trek Phase Two, and the larger literary universe that followed Gene Roddenberry's first and only Star Trek novelization of the 1979 Star Trek The Motion Picture, including novels and materials from Pocket, IDW, and others that expanded the history of cult and other Cage characters. A cult is Yeoman Cult, who you'll remember from the pilot of the cage. They basically got two actors to do test footage in costume in both the Phase 2 period and also the motion picture era. The actor who plays Leonard Nimoy's Spock is a man named Lawrence Selleck, and the actress who plays Laurel Goodwin's Yeoman Cult from the cage, her name is, and I'm probably not going to pronounce this correctly, Mahe, Maha Taisa, Maha Taisa, I think? It seems in particular that makeup and prosthetics were used to make Lawrence Selleck look like Leonard Nimoy. And it's absolutely perfect. It's staggeringly good. Obviously, my first impression was that this was a very good deep fake of Leonard Nimoy, but I don't think that's what they did here. I don't know how much, if any, CGI was used here. It doesn't say. It just says that there was makeup and prosthetics used. The performers wore meticulously recreated costumes, makeup, and prosthetics to reflect their character's evolution through key in-universe periods of Star Trek history as it was fleshed out by Roddenberry during the 60s and 70s, The Cage, 1964, Where No Man Has Gone Before, 1965, The Man Trap, 1966, and The Menagerie, 1967, the animated series, 1972, and finally the motion picture, 1979. Now, there had been a panel discussion on all of this, and the article goes on to say, Rod Roddenberry closed the panel by sharing with fans an experimental technical test commissioned by Roddenberry Entertainment, demonstrating how such technology might one day be used to remaster the 1972 Star Trek animated series as a live-action TV show with full visual continuity of the 1960s Star Trek TV show. How awesome would that be? to transform the animated series into a live-action series. Basically, it could be like a fourth season of Star Trek, the original series. Incredible. Just absolutely unreal. I'm running out of superlatives here. Now, there's other videos as well, which are very much worth watching. And you can check them out on the OTOY YouTube channel, linked below. And they have interviews as well, which you should check out. So, a lot of great content to watch, but the work that is being done by these people to archive and preserve Gene Roddenberry's legacy and this incredibly important era of Star Trek is really amazing and very much worthwhile. And when married with the technical capabilities of OTOY, it's groundbreaking. Now, as far as I'm aware, none of this is being done with a view towards making a new TV series or anything, but what might be possible with this kind of technology maybe even bringing back James T. Kirk. I mean, the sky could be the limit here in terms of imagination and potential. For now, enjoy these clips and the work that these people are doing. I'll include everything linked below and I look forward to your thoughts. All right, guys, I'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.